Welcome back to a new video guys, thank you for checking this one out, um, but today we'll be playing some UFC Undisputed 3 title mode, and uh, if you don't know what title mode is, it's basically a mode where you fight your way up the rankings until you get to the champion, and uh, the way it works is the fights tend to get harder as you climb the rankings, so once you do get to the champion, it's usually a, a very tough fight. And uh, of course, when you win the championship, then you unlock title defense mode. And after you unlock title defense mode, you can then go ahead and defend your title however, however many times you're able to do it. Now, today, as you can see right there on the screen, we'll be doing this with Norifumi, the kid Yamamoto. I really hope I said his name correctly. And we'll be doing this as a tribute to his career. Um, of course, he died on the 18th of September 2018 after losing a battle to cancer. And uh, when, when you think of Yamamoto, you think about his famous four-second flying knee knockout, but the man was also a very good freestyle wrestler, like an Olympic-level wrestler who probably would have won gold if he didn't dislocate his shoulder while competing. And um, that brings me to what I'm going to try to do with this video. I'm going to try my very best to use his whole entire game, try to replicate his style, um, he was a very fast and fleet-footed striker, but most importantly, the man could also wrestle. And uh, we'll see if we can replicate his style right here. As you can see right there on the screen, when you look at his fighter strengths, it talks about wrestling, knockout power, and athleticism. And then uh, it gives you online fighter strengths. Uh, take a look at his stats. His cardio is kind of bad for this weight class. You know, it, it kind of is. Um, but his speed is all right. His, his strength is all right, and uh, everything else, everything else, in my opinion, is fairly good. We can do work with him. So let's go right ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run with the Yamamoto. It says, are you sure you want to start a new title mode run? Any previous progress will be overwritten upon completing the match. Yes, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, once I actually... Now, I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if this is going to be like a one video thing where I do all the fights in one video. I might end up splitting it into two videos. It all depends on how long the fights are. I really don't want this to be a uber long video, so we'll see what happens. But um, once we get into a fight, I'll I'll be right back. Coming up next, it's a bantamweight collision between Chris Cariasso and Kid Yamamoto. Alrighty, so the first fight is against Chris Cariasso in the bantamweight division, and uh, we're going to try to see. See if we can end this one real quick. See if we can end this real quick. I do love that that model right there. I definitely love his character model. See if we can strike a little bit and then take him down. Up the bantamweight rankings. This is a big step up in competition for him, Mike. And a win here will really send a message that he belongs amongst the best in the 135-pound division. Ooh, he's landing these head kicks. And he answers. Oh, beautiful hook. Falling a little short on that. On that kick. <laughs> come, come here, come here. He's got double underhooks here. I love how quickly you can get into that clinch. I love that so much. Great Greco-Roman right there, Joe. Oh, nice knee. More knees. Very nice. And you can actually throw knees from this position. Trying to flatten out his opponent. Moves into full mount. Awesome control from the top. Now able to posture up. Oh! See if we can pound him out of mount a little bit. He's rocked. Ooh, it's over. <laughs> that was quick. And man, I forgot about that camera angle right there. When you rock them and mount, I mean, when you rock them and mount, it changes the camera angle and gives you that front view right there where you can now go ahead and pound them out. That is a beautiful camera angle. 
I completely forgot about that. I mean, look at how brutal the ground and pound looks in this game. That is so believable. That is so believable. And you could actually rock someone on the ground. You know? It's like every time I go back and play this game, I just I see more things that I wish UFC, you know, EA Sports UFC did. You know? Just ground and pound overall. The transition from strike and the grapple and everything. Just so much better here. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kevin Mohall has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes 56 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by TKO Norafumi Kid. Yamamoto. And that was a genuine, genuine TKO. Genuine TKO. The referee had to jump in and push me off the fighter. You know? That was a real TKO. All right. So let's try to move on here. First fight is success. And, uh,. Uh, I don't know, like I said earlier, I am not going to make this video too long, probably about 30 minutes, maybe not even, and uh, look at that, ranked number 15, so we should be expecting to face Charlie Valencia next, let's see who the champion is, Dominic Cruz, people, Dominic Cruz is the champion, he probably won't be the champion by the time I get to him, because, you know, the rankings will keep changing, but for now, he is the champ. And right there, we are at rank number 15. I'll be right back with the next one. Alright, so I actually thought I was going to face Charlie Valencia, but I guess not. <laughs> We're facing Antonio Banuelos. I am moving up that, like I said, the rankings is going to keep changing. Um, a lot of times, I'm not even going to face the person that's directly in front of me. It all depends on who wins the fights. And then, uh, that's the person that we're going to face. So, let's see if we can stop Mr. Banuelos real quick. We have a mission. Look at him. Oh, you going to bang hooks at me? Yeah, I think he has a real good chance of making it to the world if he fights as well as he did the last time. And if you guys don't remember, this is uh, you take the take down, you get the take down by spinning the stick. You shoot, you shoot for the take down, and then you rotate the stick as fast as possible to get it. Let's slowly move him towards the cage here. He's got it back. Postures up. Vicious punches from the top here, Mike. And back to full guard. Oh, body shot. Boom. Look at him fighting back from, from, from his back. He's actually slipping punches and countering. Look at that. <laughs> See that? He's slipping the punch and countering from his back. I love this. No. Come here. Tight in the clinch. And he's down. Go half guard right there and pull him right back. There we go. He is taking a lot of damage. This is not going to last too long. By the way, man, you can tell a difference between the power in, the, in this weight class. And, like, if this was heavyweight, you cannot take this ground and pound. Look at this. Why not? Got it. <laughs> Got it. Do you see how quickly I was able to switch from ground and pound to submission? It was instantly. There was no delay, no weird anything. It's just from your ground and pounding, you're pounding, 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 and immediately you switch to a submission right away. The smoothness of it, you know, it's very underrated man very underrated underappreciated at the time at the time when we were all playing this game i mean these are things that we didn't even know to appreciate things we didn't even know to praise 
but now that we have a system that is not as smooth and not as responsive on the ground and things are clunky now that you go back and you play this you have newfound respect and appreciation for it all right one by submission that dude took a lot of damage on the ground. He was like slipping the shots. He would slip and like land the hook. That was brilliant. That was nice. I completely forgot the AI could do that. But uh, at the end of the day, it was not enough. All right, let's move on. I'm not even going to pay attention to these rankings anymore. We'll probably end up facing Mizugaki or maybe Eddie Wineland. Who knows? But um, I'll be right back once the, once the next fight starts. collision between Eddie Wineland and Kid Yamamoto. I figured I wasn't going to face Takeya Mizugaki. We're facing Eddie Wineland. Kid Yamamoto. Eddie Wineland was fairly decent in this game at the time. I definitely used him quite a bit. Um, of course, his boxing was really, really good. Um, he was a stand-up fighter. But in that in this weight class at the time it was Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber was the man. You had Jose Aldo in there as well, who was a world beater. But it was uh, it was I remember specifically it was Uriah Faber. Everybody was using Uriah. Everybody was using Uriah. Um, all right, let's do it. Let us do it. He's going to be coming forward banging hooks, throwing combos to the body and stuff. I already know it. Look at these combos. Left hook, right uppercut. Jab straight to the body. Yep. Like, you get a takedown automatically. That, this actually was a mistake. I did not mean to go for this submission. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. But I was talking about the... Hold on a sec. You know what? I want to be on my back a little bit. Why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. See if we can use that head movement a little bit. The uppercut is right there. Got it. Passes to the half guard. The uppercut is right there, but not yet. Full mount. This is not good. Under 90 seconds remains in the first of three five minute rounds. It's moving north south, looking for a choke. Just over a minute remains. Oh, a nice body shot. <laughs> and mount again. Just about one minute remains in the first round. He's taking damage. He got tagged there, but it looks like he's recovered. Final 30 seconds. He defended against that one. He's going to take more of these hooks. Rocked again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He survived. He survived. Yeah. High caliber fighter. Any other fighter would have been done. Yeah, these are two very well-rounded guys, Mike. It'll be interesting to see what So we're trying to mix it up, you know, strike a little bit. If I see an opportunity, I go for a takedown. I was saying, in this game, man, the automatic takedowns are really easy to get. Really easy to get. Aggression does not do anything for takedowns at all. Like, if if you want to stop someone from taking you down in this game, you it has to be like fighters usually do, which is you fight a little bit more technical. Because if you get over aggressive, 
if you are in the fighter's face banging out hooks easily i could just duck the uh, the hook and take you down instantly so that's the one thing about this game that i did enjoy takedowns and grappling was you could use that to slow aggression got him like these punches he's throwing right now and i could just duck one of these and take him down instantly rocked oh this might be the end he caught it. Joe, this place is going wild. Oh, he lets him up. I'm going to see if I can land an uppercut. Good body shot. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure what he went for. I think he might have done his regular combo, the straight followed by the lead hook to the body, and I caught him with the uppercut as he was going to the body. Hold on, I want to see this. Look how he throws his body into that, connects, and just puts him to sleep. Yeah, that was actually a Superman punch into a lead hook. A Superman punch into a lead hook to the body. I just, I just winged an uppercut in there and caught him at the right time. Caught him at the right time right there. Look at this. Bam. And that is it. All right, guys. So, I'm thinking... I'm thinking this one's going to be the last one. Um, Yeah, I think this is going to be the... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Declaring the winner by knockout, Norfumi Kid. Yamamoto. All right, so I think I have time for one more, maybe two more. It all depends on how long these fights last. Like I said, I don't want this video to be too long. But um, let's go ahead and proceed. I'm kind of curious who the champion is at this point. Last time it was Dominic Cruz. Let's see who it is now. Oh, look, that KM Mizugaki is on, is above me. Wait, Brad Pickett? <laughs> All right, moving on. Be right back. It's a bantamweight collision between Takeya Mitsugaki and Kid Yamamoto. And now we face Takeya Mitsugaki. Now, I remember explicitly in this game, he is very aggressive. Mitsugaki is very, very aggressive. We're going to need to initiate grappling. We definitely need to grapple with them. Um, he's also quite aggressive with the grappling, so maybe I'll try to showcase the uh, intercept knees. He will go for like clinch attempts, he will go for takedowns repeatedly, so maybe I could try to end the fight here with a, um, try to end the fight with, uh, with an intercept knee or something. We'll see. This fight is three rounds in the UFC Bantamweight Division. This man is a mixed martial artist. He stands five feet and now fighting. All right, let's do it. Skip, 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 skip. When the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Eve Levine. Eve Levine. Eve Levine, our referee. Mike Goldberg alongside Joe Rogan. Hey, well, look at her. I forget her name. Shondella, something like that. She's no longer a ring girl. I forget what happened. I think she got caught doing porn or something. And here we go. Joe, how do you approach this fight? Here we go. Yamamoto. He's been pretty successful as of late. Three yeah, look at this. Look at this dude. Yeah, and that's the kind of winning streak that gets attention. If he can make it four in a row tonight, that'll send a message to the rest of the Let's division. see if we can uh, use some slip counters. Counters that nicely. Beautiful uppercut. He shoots. He shoots. Shrugged off for no. good takedown defense. Oh, he got it. Got you know what? It's okay. I'll be on my back. Pushing his opponent away. Come here, big boy. Come here. There we He's go. Here. Mm -hmm. He moves into half guard. And 
back to full guard. Yeah. Let's try to get ourselves to the cage a little bit. I'll fight you back. I'll fight you back from my back. <laughs> Pushes him off of the feet. Well over two minutes remains in round number one. Damn. Oh, those are vicious. Over the top. Body shot. Sometimes it's better to throw shorter, quicker punches. There we go. And that's what we're seeing here tonight. When you put all I'm trying to see if I can time these, really these slip counters. To who, which, by the way, are way more dependable and consistent than the slip counters in UFC. In EA UFC. See that? But of course, that leads to... He's dropped. What the heck was that? You know, the striking here is definitely robotic. I mean, it's clearly... Look at this dude. He's constantly getting me in the... Double under clinch. Joe, he's got his opponent up against the fence. He's trying to grapple. Fuck me. To try to get to a more dominant position. He's got his opponent up towards the fence. He'll do it again. Hey, man. You better believe I am looking for those knees. Better believe it. And you never know how a judge weighs a takedown over, say, a You run into a knee. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for your jaw. It will not be good for your jaw. Stay patient. Opportunity will come. He's getting through your grapple block, so try to transition first. I know. I know. Let's take a look at the replay from that round, Mike. This was that counter. Such unbelievable timing on that. And he ducked under and came over the top with a hook, with a left hook. I like that. Yeah, the striking here is more, is more robotic, but it's more responsive, which is interesting. It's like it's, it definitely is more responsive. It could be, it could be, I don't know. It's just spamming body hooks. Really, bro? Really? You trying to work my body? <laughs> no. Take his back. He's got his back, Mike. Full hooks. Mitsugaki is cut open here, Mike. Fighter on the bottom. Oh, he's hurt. He's rocked. He got tagged there, but it looks like he's recovered. Look at he. Look at this. He is so aggressive. He is so aggressive with everything he does. His transitions. I love it. It's a difference in, you know, it's a different character. Everything he does, he does with, with so much aggression. Look at him. Just forcing everything. He's up. He's going to go for a takedown again. I know it. I know it. Oh. Looking for it. for the takedown. Got it. They clinch again. And you see his takedown animation? It's like a clinch takedown. Uh-oh. I'm looking for it. Mm. Almost. Almost. Left hook and then an uppercut. Got it. He dropped him. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's back to his feet, but he's hurt. Less than a minute remains in round two. I'm looking for it. Oh. Now they clinch. Threw a kick by mistake. That would have been nasty. in the clinch beautiful throw great greco roman right there joe oh, that right hand rocked that's the end of round number two. beautiful beautiful 
I'm gonna get you with that knee. I'm gonna get you with that knee. I will get him with that knee. He could keep going for them takedowns, but he's gonna eat that knee for breakfast. It's only a matter of time. He is really predictable with it too. Like he won't even set it up. He just like he just goes for it. And like I said, he has a very unique, he has a unique takedown animation. Well, not Let's unique to him, the but round, there's like, well there has to be like four different takedown animations in this game. Like shoot, for, like takedowns you shoot. You got the GSP style double. You've got the Matt Hughes style double. You got the Brock Lesnar double. And then you've got like two different single leg takedowns. And then you've got the Dan Henderson clinch trip, which is what Takeya Mizugaki has. A lot of variety, man. Come here. I'm coming at you now. Got it. Got it. This is nasty right there. He's done. He's done. He's done. It's over. Oh, my goodness. That is brilliant. You see, it's like it's, it was really balanced. Even though you could get takedowns a lot easier in this game, you run into a knee. I mean, you could think you could just spam away at takedowns because it's easy to get. You run into a knee, this is what happens right there. So, at the end of the day, you still had to set up your takedowns. You still had to set it up. And it was very effective against aggressive opponents. If you were aggressive with takedowns, you could get caught. You know what I mean? So, the game kind of encouraged you to use takedowns reactively. Like, to use reactive takedowns as opposed to, like, Super aggressive with them. God, I love this. I love this. I think we're going to end it right here. Yeah. We've got like, what, 27 minutes? I think we're going to end it right here. Yamamoto. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I really hope so. Fingers crossed. If you are, leave a like. Let me know. And I will bring uh, episode two for you guys. But that is it for the first episode. As always, thank you. Thank you for watching. It means a lot. I will see you guys very, very shortly with the next episode. Stay safe.